Okay, <clears throat> so this is my video on how I converted a HP DL380P small form factor server into a large form factor server. So SSF, SFF to LFF. Um, everything I read, on, I read online said that you couldn't do this. I challenged that assumption and I gave it a shot. So what I have here, I've already done this. It's not going to be a step by step where you get to see where I, what I did, but I'll, I'll show you. Um, this is the original uh, server front end that I had. It says right on there, ProLiant DL380P Gen 8. Um, and it has eight small form factor drives, has a DVD drive there. Uh, your small drives fit in here. It has a little display panel that tells you about what's going on with the RAM, the hard drives, the NICs. Uh, so it has that little control panel, which in my conversion, this control panel was not included. Uh, normally, if you had bought the server from HP, they have some, some nifty little drawer that comes out where you pop it out and you can take a look at this stuff, but I don't have that. Um, I don't know how much I need that. So, that's the front end. So basically, the way this works is this front end for the SFF is just shorter than the LFF. So when you convert to an LFF, you end up with a server that's uh, two or two and a half inches longer. Um, and basically, this whole thing just bolts right off. Um, and then you end up with a longer server. Problem is making the cables work. So I had bought a 380E front end on eBay because I couldn't find a 380P front end. I don't know if they're available or, or what, but it came with these cables, which none of it, which were any good to me for a 380P server. So these cables here, the problem is, is that these connections right here uh, look like, what, about 24 pins, two 24 pin connections. Those normally on a 380E server go onto the board. But for this board, for a 380P board, they don't fit. So let me dismantle this a little bit. So I'm going to take the fan shroud off, take out the fans. Okay, so the problem was is that when this thing is all put together normally, this back plane for the small form factor just drop something shouldn't have all right so for the small form factor this is all kind of loose right now but for the small form factor there's ports one and port two these are the SAS ports um, and then this is a power guard for the SA uh, for the SS SFF backplane right here is where your DVD drive would go um, problem was is the cabling wasn't going to work because when you look at, let me take you off the, off here, hold on just a sec. So we have these cables, that's where the SAS connections are, um, which run back to here. Uh, in my case, where I now have the LFF in here, there's one port here, so the cable is plenty long enough to get there. I have it coiled up in the corner there. But over here, this one couldn't be reached, so it's kind of it's kind of ghetto, but I have this cable kind of running over everything. Now, these two cables had been together. Uh, I just took a razor blade and cut them apart. Uh, they were... They were connected right 
uh, on one side or the other. Um, but they can just be cut apart. So that, that's what I did. So then I can hook up this guy here, right? And then it has to go over the fan shroud, which I'm sure, you know, if you're a purist, you don't like that. Um, they, this server was sold in an LFF configuration, so I'm sure that there are cables available, but I'm a home user. I don't care. Um, I just want it to work, and it does. So, I have this LFF backplane. Uh, the power cable fits just fine. He comes over from here to here. But notice, like I was uh, mentioning before, these connectors here, they don't go anywhere on this board. Uh, that was the, the biggest problem with this build. Um, so as it turns out, um, I was able to make it work. But I basically had to reuse the cables that were with the SS, SFF front end on the LFF front end. So the way that I accomplished that was uh, the cables run through this little channel right here. They end up coming out right here. And then they connect to these guys. Let me, let me put, put this back on the tripod. here so we've got we've got power right here we've got a VGA connector right here this was the most problematic one if you look closely at this you can see that this is really quite taut it's it's not great but it fits and what that does is it gets you to this VGA connector right here on the other side, on this guy here, there's a power button, a USB drive, and another button. Um, so the real simplicity in all this was just basically that this whole thing just comes off. Um, so with the SFF, there are a series of screws which go in here, 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 and here. And what those do is they allow these things to come out. Um, which if you then pull all these out, what we find inside, this one, this server had been uh, manipulated a little bit and this got a little bent, so um, it's going to take me a minute to get this out. There we go. Okay. So here, in here, you can see there's a bunch of different keyways. Um, basically, this whole thing slides onto some bergs, onto uh, some standoffs that are in here. Um, and you pull this off, you pull it up, and you put the new one on. And that's it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the biggest problem was getting the cabling through this guy. So basically I took the cabling from, he, from my SFF and had to run it through my LFF. Um, at first glance, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do that. But... Let me put this back together here. So, on the uh, on the sides of these guys uh, of, of this server, where it mounts to the mounts to your two connectors right here, which the USB keeps falling out. So I'm just going to leave that off for a minute. So it looks like this. On the back side of these, there's a couple of torque screws right there and there's three on this one this one has the rgb in it um, and this one is the power switch um, so really it was just a matter of taking those three screws off 
And then at that point, you can lift this guy up and pull him off. And there you go. There's the inside of it. Um, now, for this one in particular, with the 380E cabling, the connections to this and to this are the same for the E and the P. So it's just a matter of getting the cabling out of the of the of the LFF enclosure and putting them into uh, I'm sorry, taking them out of the SSF SFF and putting them into the LFF. Um, so this one was kind of tricky because it's interesting. There is let's see, you put this in here this way. I'm not exactly sure what this one is. Um, he connects right here on jumper 157. I'm not sure what that is. It's just a two-wire connection. Um, but the only thing on here is RGB, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that is. That might be a, a chassis intrusion sensor or something. I'm not sure what that is. However, getting this to unplug took a second to figure out. As it turns out, in here, there's a little metal piece um, that's right in front of it that if you push it to the right, it locks it in place. Well, maybe not. Maybe if you push it to the left, it locks it in place. Yep. Okay. So, there's a little metal lever in here. When it's over to the left, this plug is, is trapped. Push it over to the right, and it unplugs no problem. Other than that, there's a little ground that goes behind this guy here. Um, so that's pretty simple. And then there is this multi-pin connection, connection which plugs in right here. Like that. So the hardest problem with doing this was getting these pieces through the enclosure. As it turns out, it's really not that hard. Um, this guy, if you just bend them like that, you're putting extra stress on the cable, but it's doable. Um, and then when you lay all these down, you can see that they all kind of lay in different places, which makes it so that you can fit it through this hole right here. And then, so you put the, uh, the ground first, then the two-wire guy, um, and then the most important and most difficult one, which is the BGA. But at this point, all I did was show those through there, and I'm doing it gently. Now I'm doing the back, the opposite of what I did before, right? Because I'm, I'm I'm taking the cables and I'm putting them through the SFF uh, front end. Now I messed up on this a little bit. The ground didn't go through. But you get the idea. You just got to push this thing through. And there you go. So now on the front end, we can see the ground came through. And obviously you want to be a little delicate with this because these are very small wires. You don't want to, you don't want to scrape them as much as possible. Um, but now I've got it through. And there you go. Now I've put these cables through on the SFF enclosure that were originally cables for the 380E. This is not what we need done in this case. I was trying to make a 380P work, so I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes what I did in order to take my P cables out of the SSFF enclosure and put them through the LFF enclosure. Then once you have that, once you have them through, it's just a matter of hooking the ground up right there, um, doing this little two-pin guy and flipping him around and locking him in place, and then uh, putting this big guy in. And that's it. Um, the other side is very similar. So this side has the RGB on it. Uh, the other side has, like I said, the power button, this UID button, and then a little USB um, right there. 
So in this case, this whole thing kind of pops out. Um, <clears throat> so this is the SFF right, and then you can see over here is the SFF left. I left. I, di I didn't use these. I used the LFF that came with the new enclosure. Um, but on the SFF right, again, you see there's just another little bird here. This guy, just like we said before, had, uh, I don't know, probably 15 or 16 pins in it. It's got a couple buttons on it, which are the power button and the UID. There's no lock in this one. You just got to get this in here right. And then, again, uh, in order to provide a common ground for the entire circuit, there's... On this cable, there is that multi-pin bird, right? Which we're going to put in there. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, right there. And then you put this little ground ring down and screw in... Uh, well, one of these guys, but I don't know what happened to the one that was on here. Um, I don't intend to use this for anything, so I wasn't really keeping track of parts on that when I was done. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, that's the biggest problem, is getting the cabling through this thing. It took me a while to figure out that I was able to do that, where I could just push it through. So now you can take your 380E cabling and get rid of that. You don't need that. And use your 380P cabling instead. So now with your 380P cabling, when you put it through, you end up with this guy here. And he is the front power USB UID. And that's just one cable. So that's quite different from what uh, this guy had, because everybody came in to just one or two big burbs here. With the um, with the 380P, you have a separate connection for the, for the front power USB UID, which, again, at the front end, connects to the same pieces as the 380E. You just got to convert it over, like I said, by pushing your cables through. Here's your two-wire guy. Now, the VGA here, that's like really, really tight. You can see I even cracked the, uh, the connector a little bit. Um, this is really taut. It's not perfect. I'm sure there's probably an HP cable that's just a little bit longer that you could buy, but for a home user, why do you care? Um, it works. It fits just fine. Um, Okay, one other thing, my server has this guy um, because it has this cache module back here. Uh, I think this is for the uh, SAS. And it's battery backed up, but it's not backed up by a battery, it's backed up by a cap. So this is a what says a 17 farad 5.4 volt cap. So this holds a lot of charge. Um, that had been in here, and it fits into this nice little slot here, and it locks in just like that. Unfortunately, this slot is riveted in. It's not screwed in. I can't take that guy out. Originally I had thoughts that I could take him out and place him at the top of the LFF enclosure, but that just did that, that just isn't gonna work. Um, I'm sure I could do some surgery on it to figure it out, but I'm just not going to. Um, it works just fine. You know I have that just shoved into an extra space here. Uh, that isn't necessary, and then I took the extra cabling and put it underneath the little uh, cable holder that is on the 380p. So this little cable holder, 
I just have it coiled up in there, right? All the extra length that's there. Uh, that's about it. Uh, as far as the back plane goes, I mean, really, it looks... You look at the SS SFF black back plane, it's got a bunch of big caps on here at every single one of the, uh, the connection points for the SAS drives. Uh, then port 1 and port 2, which can connect back to here. Um, if you want to do, if you're trying to do a conversion where you want to take an 8 SFF front end and do one of the ones where they have, you know, uh, either 16 SFF or 25 SFF, I forget how big you can go with this server originally in the original configuration sold by HP. I don't think you could do that, at least not with the board that I have. Um, it looks like on here there was more um, there was more stuff that you would need. There was more connections on the board that you would need more to do more drives, but I'm not entirely sure about that. You might be able to do it otherwise, um, but this is how I converted mine. I have eight small drives, turned them into eight large drives. So, here are, let me just show the front end again. So, there you can see there are eight connections for drives. So, basically, from the server's perspective, there was, you know, four drives per cable on the small, and there's four drives per cable on the big. So it doesn't care. I booted it right up. It had no idea I had done anything to it. Um, so, so that's basically it. Uh, just feed those cables through here. Um, if we look, actually one more thing. Get you guys close again. So in here, you can see there's these keyways. Uh, hopefully uh, that's staying in focus. Um, there are these keyways that right here is another one. You know, there's I think eight of them. And those are these keyways right here. So this whole guy, he had slid on and then he slides right off. And both of the enclosures, both of the front ends are held on by one, two, three, four screws on either side. You remove those screws and then this whole thing just comes right off. Um, that's about it. That's how you do it. Um, this doesn't make me super excited. You know, that could be better. Um, there's a USB port on the front here, right here, in this uh, 380E front end, that I wasn't able to hook up. So, if we look on the this, this which was coming off of the SFF, the way the USB port is on that one, right there there's the USB port when you take that out there's no connection to this guy on this guy there is he's actually connected using um, using this bird right here this eight, uh, 10 12 pin bird right here so he clips onto that guy. I don't have him hooked up right yet, so I'm missing a USB port at this point. This one works, but this one does not. Um, but this is real simple. I mean, this is the same as like a, this is like the same as a commercial hard drive, um, or commercial motherboard. So I just need to find the right one um, and maybe splice that together. This is the five pin Berg that would connect that USB to the motherboard. 
and that gets plugged in right here. So if you really don't care what things look like, you can really just hook this up and then just route this through the front of here and just have it hanging out if you really need that extra USB port. Personally, I don't really need it. I'm not worried about it. Um, so I'm just not using it. Okay, so uh, I think that's about it. Um, you know, if you're not familiar, your, D your uh, DVD drive, there's a little blue tab on the back of here. You push that down, the DVD pops right out. Um, this is the SATA connection right here, which routes back to here. Um, that's really about it. So, in order to take everything apart, you know, with the processors and the heat sink sitting there, go put the shroud over. This uh, SAS cable needs to run over the top. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, see, it, when, when you take this thing apart, you got to do things in stages just because this cable has to run over the top. So you start out by putting your fans in. So, fans are in. Then, this shroud, which directs the heat over the CPU, or directs the air over the CPUs to draw heat to the back of the machine. And then, since I split these two cables, this one runs in its original track. Uh, SAS port 2.1 runs in its original track, and I just had to bunch it up a little bit at the end to get it onto this backplane. And then this one, because it's shorter, has to go over the top. But you can route this however you like. Um, I really don't think it matters. If you're a purist, you probably are like, oh no, you're you know blocking some of the air going through there. Um, it's fine. Uh, that's about it. So we throw the cover back on. Cover sticks on, everybody's happy. And now we have an 8-drive LFF server, still have a DVD drive up front. I'm not sure if this could be done. Um, there was another configuration of these where there was another row of LFF drives, no DVD drive. Um, I'm not sure if that could be done uh, in this particular case. That would be a 12 LFF server. I'm not sure if it can be done with this motherboard. I don't know if it needs another Berg for uh, a third uh, SAS port. From what I was looking on at on eBay, it looked like it did. It looked like there was three uh, LFF um, SAS ports on the on the back plane. I only have two. And then last but not least is this guy right here. He's my um, serial number for the HP. Uh, this guy, I transferred over from the SFF. It just, you, 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 if you squeeze this right here, you can pop it right out uh, and take it from, it was, yeah, it was in this display panel. It was right down here on the bottom of this display panel, just below the USB, right here. Um, that's it. Uh, with that, I was able to do the conversion of making an SFF uh, uh, HP server into an SF or into an LFF. Uh, didn't cost me any money outside of just buying this front piece, which was like 40 bucks. Uh, and now I can put in much cheaper five and a quarter inch drives than the three and a half inch enterprise drives. This is great for a home user. The back plane can talk to SAS or SATA. It doesn't care. So you can fill this thing up with SATA, with SATA you know, NAS drives, um, download an ESXi image, install that. I actually had mine running off of a USB key right here. So the OS is on here which is fine, don't worry about the speed of that because it all gets loaded in the RAM 
when it boots anyway. So the boot is a little slow, but the boot of every server is always a little slow. Once it's in RAM, VMware runs super fast because it's in RAM. And then it saves your configuration changes to the USB key every once in a while. If you do an image backup of that, I have a few of these laying around so that if I ever need to restore, I have the image backups and I just put it on a new key, plug it in, and uh, I don't have to worry about wasting any of my storage, which I want to put, you know, my movies, my uh, videos, music, whatever. Um, I can use all of these drives for VMs and run the OS off of the USB key. With that, I think I'm done. Um, this is my conversion from SFF to LFF of a DL380P uh, HP server. That's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.